Good morning, Willard Wildcats. Happy I Be Green Tuesday, May 5th. Today, we're going to be reading a special book called Chato's Kitchen by Gary Soto. The illustrations are by Susan Guevara. I love this book. This has been one of my favorites for years, so I'm hoping you enjoy it too. Chato's Kitchen. Chato, a little riding cat with six stripes, was slinking toward a sparrow when he heard the scrape of tiny feet coming from the yard next door. Left, right, left, right. Chato's ears perked up. His tail began to swing to the rhythm. He felt the twinge of a mambo in his hips. The movement frightened the sparrow who shot off into a tree. Does he look like he's dancing a little bit? No problem, my homeboy, Chato said to himself and followed his nose to the fence. Through the narrow slats, his eyes grew big as he spied five mice the color of gray river rock. His whiskers vibrated with the pleasure, with pleasure and he leaped onto the fence for a closer view. What do cats like to eat? Mice. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a whole family of fat juicy mice moving into the house next door. Chato raked his tongue over his lips and meowed a deep growling meow. The mice froze with their belongings on their backs. They began to shiver like leaves in the wind. Chato was the tallest cat they had ever seen. Orale neighbors, Chato purred. Don't be scared of me. I'm a cool low riding cat. The mouse dropped their things and scattered. No de veras hombres, I'm okay. Chato reassured, but the yard was empty. Another meow rumbled in his stomach, just barely suppressed. Aren't those illustrations beautiful? Chato thought for a moment as he stabbed his face into his furry shoulder and chewed the daylights out of a bothersome flea. Aha, he thought, I'll invite them for dinner. Chato jumped down from the fence and returned to his house. On a piece of fine paper, he wrote, Chato welcomes you to the barrio and invites your tasty family for a surprise dinner tonight at six o'clock. Chato immediately saw his error and changed tasty to lovely. He folded the invitation into a paper airplane and tossed it over the fence. Do you think the mice might've gotten suspicious if he said, your tasty family? Maybe a little bit. The airplane spiraled down on a parachute of wind and Poppy Mouse read it aloud. Should we go, asked Mommy Mouse. Why not, Poppy said. That Chato cat seems muy simpatico. Very nice, I'm sure. But isn't Chorizo coming over tonight? Mommy Mouse asked. Ijole, that's right, Poppy said. A friend from the old neighborhood was due over for dinner. They called him Chorizo or Sausage because well, that's the kind of guy he was. After much talk, Poppy wrote back, many thanks, mil gracias, we're coming, and we'd like to bring a friend, okay? Oh, sure, Chato shouted over the fence, a friend of a friend is a friend, que no? He couldn't believe his luck. Instead of just five mice, there would be six. Chato pranced off to the kitchen to rattle his pots and pans, whistling La Bamba. He took out beans for frijoles, perfect for mice, then ripe avocados for guacamole, very nice. And he checked for some arroz because of course we need rice. As he was piling ingredients on a table, the doorbell rang. It was Chato's best friend, Novio Boy, a cat with soft green eyes, sleek fur, and the loveliest growl in the barrio. Novio Boy wore the flashiest cat collar, a leather one with real gems that sparkled at night when the cats passed in the street. Yo, cool cat of East Los Homes, he purred. What you doing? I'm having mice for dinner, served with the works. Help me with las tortillas. The guys got to work while Chato rolled out the tortillas with a rolling pin. Novio boy placed them on the hot griddle, careful not to burn his paws. He flipped them over when one side was baked until both sides were perfect. 
All afternoon, they worked away in the kitchen. They cooked the beans and made the salsa, not too spicy for the guests, and a large pitcher of tamarindo. They made fajitas, enchiladas, carne asada, chilerenos, and finally, a sweet, smooth flan. Do they look happy in that kitchen? I think so. While the cats were busy in Chato's kitchen, the mice were settling into their new home. They had set up a bottle cap for a bathtub, a chip of glass for a mirror, and their matchbox beds all in a line. But they still remembered as the sun began to drop behind the trees that they could take a dish to Chato, that they should take a dish to Chato's house. What did they make? Quesadillas, of course, featuring their favorite ingredient, cheese. Soon, Chorizo arrived and the mice danced in the shadow of their long, skinny, low-riding friend. They told him about the party at Chato's house. Okay, ratoncitos, little mice, it's time to go to the fiesta. So they climbed onto Chorizo's back where they all clung to his short fur. As if in a limousine, they cruised out of their jungly yard and around the picket fence to Chato's place. What do you think their friend Chorizo is? What kind of animal might Chorizo be? Chato and Novio Boy were in the living room grooming themselves for the party. After five hours of cooking, they were so hungry that each time a bird swooped past the window, their gray eyes grew narrow and their mouths watered. When they heard a rap on the door, they grinned at each other. It was like a delivery service with mice instead of pizza. We brought chorizo, Mommy Mouse called. Sausage, Chato and Novio Boy danced with the clean paws they gave each other, a low four. We can have chorizo con mice, Novio Boy grinned. Picture. Oh, what kind of animal is chorizo? Mm -hmm. A dog. But when they opened the door, Chato and Novio Boy were facing a low, road-scraping dog with a barrio of mice on its back. We're here, shouted one of the little ones. The cool cats didn't say anything. They didn't hiss or swat the air. They ran and cowered under the dining table. You think this was quite a surprise for them? I think you're right if you're thinking yes. Chorizo wagged into the house, his belly bumping over the threshold. He clicked on paw nails he clicked on paw nails into the kitchen his nose picked up the smells of the simmering food he shivered the he shivered the mice from his back and they dropped like gray fruit hola chorizo barked politely you think chorizo might have had an idea about what they were planning let's see Chato and Novio Boy scampered from under the table and leaped up on the curtains where they meowed for their lives. What are you doing here, there? Mommy Mouse asked. Don't tell me you're scared of Chorizo. Mira, he's a nice dog. Chorizo wagged his tail and let his tongue fall out. Chato and Novio Boy looked at each other. They slid from the curtains and fur rays greeted Chorizo with a cautious meow. Well, who are cats afraid of? Often dogs. Slowly, everyone took their seats. Salud, toasted chorizo, to your health. Salud, Chato agreed forlornly. He was not going to eat any guests tonight, but still he figured it was a pretty good meal. They would rattled from their pots and pans. After all, it came from Chato's kitchen. Seems like an unlikely friendship, huh? Wildcats, remember in this month of May, we are celebrating the entire child. And celebrating the whole child means we look at all of the aspects of the IB learner profile and the IB attitudes. So be sure to think about something that you're working on today. Like today, when we read this book, we really had to be thinkers because we had to think about what do cats usually eat? Who do dogs usually chase? So we could kind of more have a better understanding of the story. So think about that and apply that to your work today as you work and have a wonderful Tuesday. Remember, we are safe, respectful, and responsible. And in May, in order to stay safe, we're staying home. Have a great day.